face toward the ground. And he said, Behold now, my Lord's turn yet. I pray you into your servant's house and tarry all night and wash your feet. And ye shall rise up early and go on your ways. Amen. Amen. Did you come to bless the Lord on this morning? Oh, come on. Did you come to bless the Lord on this morning? He's an awesome God and he's great and greatly to be praised. So we've come to honor his name and all that he is. He's an awesome God. And he reigns forever with wisdom and power in his hands. Come on, clap your hands with us. You know who said this? Our God is an awesome God. Some God, and he reigns forever and ever. 
other. We came to give him glory. Because if he's not glorified, it's all in vain. Come on, lift your hands. Say, you're God Almighty. You're Lord of glory. And we worship you. Come on, let's continue our worship on this morning. Hallelujah. Lord, we love you. You're so worthy of our praise. Lord.
Amen. Is that anybody's testimony that we worship him today? Is that anybody's testimony that we worship him today? Well, first of all, you all, I am Bryson Porter, and I am so excited to invite you or uh, welcome you all to College Sunday. Are y'all happy to be here? I see a lot of us got the memo. Y'all look good. Y'all look real, real good today. So um, as a, a part of our initiative, uh, we know we've been focusing on vaccinations and uh, promoting vaccinations here at Greater Community Temple through our nonprofit here uh, called Community Projects, Inc. Um, we are starting a new initiative called Campus and Congregation. So we're actually going to be going on tour, uh, spreading the word about vaccinations um, and the importance of them uh, throughout the state. So we'll be going to different college campuses and things of that sort in different churches all throughout the state. So that's actually why we did this initiative here today called College Sunday. We know our students are here uh, on break. So what better way to start than to start with our college students here at GCT, amen? So thank you all so much for wearing your apparel, coming out um, dressed in your college stuff. I know some of y'all are still suited and booted. That's okay. You look good too, amen? Amen. But I have one of our college students, Nick Thompson, here uh, with me. Y'all give him a hand clap. So Nick is a representative um, of our GCT Collegiate Ministry. And basically, we just wanted to ask him just a few questions about how being vaccinated helped him in his college experience. Nick, how you doing? I'm good. Good, good, good. Yeah, I'm good. I'm good. <laughs> Nick, what school do you go to starting off? I go to Tennessee State University. Tennessee State University. I'll give it. Anybody go to TSU here? <laughs> hey, man. So Nick is playing football. What position are you playing at TSU? Receiver. Receiver. So y'all got to get on your televisions, lock in, get your ESPN, ESPN Plus, and y'all look out for GT, GCT's own. Hey, Amen. When he's making a million dollars, don't ask him none if you weren't watching the games now. So how did being vaccinated help you at TSU? It made life really easy, like going to classes. We don't have mask mandates, so you can walk around freely without a mask and been around thousands of um, people every day. It could be very, you know, kind of you got to be cautious and everything. So. so would you say that you were able to not only keep yourself safe, but help your community stay safe, your team stay safe as well? Yes, sir, most definitely. Well, that's what I'm talking about, you all. We're not staying up here long. This is just a prime example um, of how being vaccinated can help in our communities. When we were doing our research, as you see on the screen behind me, it's showing you just a little bit of information. Um, basically, the age group of 17 to 30 um, is the least vaccinated uh, group in our country. So that's why we started this initiative. That's why we're focusing um, on this age group and starting this campus and congregation um, initiative. So y'all give Nick a hand clap. We're so appreciative for him. You good, man. I appreciate you. We're so appreciative for Nick um, and those just like him. And without further ado, I need y'all to make some noise for this group right here. They are amazing. We have the best. I'm not going to say one of the best on this side of heaven, not this the best on this side of the Mississippi. We have the best angel choir in the world. Amen. None, led by none other than Sister Bell over there. They do such an amazing job. I'm talking about... Their rehearsals in the fellowship hall sound like Zach's rehearsals up here on Wednesday. They get it in. So I want you all to welcome our babies, amen? The Angel Choir. Come on out, y'all.
Thank you all so much, Angel Choir. They are amazing. Y'all give them one more hand. Amen. Again, you all, we are so excited to be here at College Sunday. I'm back here in the media room. Come here, eight. I want you to sit with me. Uh, this is going to be another one of our youth spotlights. Slide in that camera view. You all, this is Aiden. Aiden, how old are you? Aiden is 13 years old. Aiden is 13 years old, you all. And he manages our entire operation back here, along with Ian Heitch. Um, they're young, they're ready, they're on fire for God, and they are helping so much in the ministry. So y'all give Aiden a hand clap for me one time. I know we do our youth spotlight out in the front, but I love doing my media youth spotlight uh, because I work with some great youth back here in the back. But starting off with Christmas Day service. I'm so excited about Christmas Day service. Um, we are going this year to North Memphis. Amen. Uh, we're so excited to go to our North Campus. It's going to be on Christmas Eve from 10 o'clock until 11 a.m. Now, that's a.m., you all, not p.m. We are going to North Memphis from 10 a.m. until 11 a.m. on Christmas Eve. Bishop really did not want to leave our North Campus out this year, and he wanted to make sure that they were a part of our Christmas celebration. And then following that, we're going to be going to the east location where you're sitting right now uh, from 10 o'clock to 11 a.m. the next day. That's Christmas Day service. So Christmas Eve, we're at north, and Christmas Day, we're at east. And you know, if we don't do anything else, we are going to have some giveaways for our children. We love our children here at Greater Community Temple, uh, and we're so excited to be able to celebrate this Christmas season with them. Also, you all, we have our uh, watch night service. That's uh, watch night is going to be, of course, you know, uh, the 31st of December, and we're celebrating not all night long, but at least till 12 o'clock. And if you have ever been a part of our watch night services, you know that we have a grand old time here at Greater Community Temple. And if you haven't been a part, let me just tell you, this is not the year that you want to miss. We're going into 2023 celebrating, praising God, and letting him know that we are ready. We are expecting more in 2023. Now, you all know that December 31st is New Year's Eve, but the very next day, somebody shout, the very next day. I'm going to grab my towel here, y'all, because I'm hot, I'm working, but that's all right. The very next day is January 1st. January 1st is going, we're going right back to service. So we're getting out at 12. We're coming right back at 9. So set your alarms, uh, wake up, do your, bake, uh, your black eyed peas, whatever you need to do. Um, and make sure that you're back at service at 930 because we want to bring the new year in right. And then we want to start the new year off even better. Uh, so we're going to be right back here on New Year's Day uh, for our service. Thank you all so much for tuning in. I do not want to leave without mentioning tonight. Everybody shout tonight. Tonight, we have an awesome concert scheduled for you all. It's called our halftime. Uh, uh, earlier, I mentioned uh, that our college students are back on Christmas break. So tonight is going to be halftime. We've got artists such as Josh Bracey. Um, we've got uh, Brother Jalen Washington, who's coming to MC. Courtney Richardson, who's coming to MC. Olivia Walker, who's coming to sing. Uh, your very own GCT Youth Praise Team, as you just heard. Um, we've got Ariel Rain. Uh, we've got uh, Brother Julius. We've got so many coming. Uh, Hub City out of Jackson, Tennessee. We've got so many artists coming, and they are on fire for God, and they are so ready to minister. Uh, we've been planning for this for a minute, and we are going to have an awesome time right here at Greater Community Temple. Let me tell you something. Do not miss out on tonight. I don't think the Sunday night football game tonight is even that good of a game, you all. Do not miss out on tonight. We are going to have fun. We're going to uh, have a great time in God. And y'all that aren't wearing your college apparel today, I want you to wear it tonight. Go Walmart, Target, get your polo, get whatever you need. And we are going to have a great time. Lastly but not least, we have our Christmas cantata. Our Christmas cantata is going to take place next Sunday night, amen, at um, 6 p.m. That's 6 p.m. next Sunday. Sunday night. We know we always have a great Christmas cantata led by none other than uh, Elder Zacchaeus Hayslet and Sister Daphne and uh, Brother Thomas McDonald. So please, please, please um, be in the place next Sunday. We'll give you all more information on what's exactly going down. You all, I have talked so much. That is it for me. 
I want to get to this next part of the service because we have some awesome, not only singers, uh, but we also have an amazing man of God coming to bring the word. So thank you all so much for tuning into your announcements. I am Bryson Porter again, and we're getting right back to the rest of the service. Well, me and Aiden, we'll see y'all later. Amen. Oh, we bless God for all that he does. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Great to be God, and we owe him our highest praise. Amen.
all, we are flying through this service. I'm so excited that you all have joined us. I see a little bit, a, a few more people, and I see a few more college shirts. I'm so excited. Y'all don't understand. When we try to do something like this, a lot of times um, we don't get the memo out to everybody. But when I tell y'all, we only did this like maybe four days ago, and y'all have shown up and shown out uh, with these shirts on. We're working on Bishop. Bishop is going to have a shirt on tonight. I called him at 8 o'clock this morning. He said, I ain't got none. Um, <laughs> But we're working on it, baby. Uh, we're getting on through our service. We have a special uh, music guest by the name of Julian Cross. You all, he came, um, I feel like the last time he came, it was about maybe seven or eight years ago, and he was much younger than he is now. Uh, so once he, when he comes up, a lot of you all are going to be familiar with him. He's a graduate of Memphis Central High School in 2019. Did anybody go to Memphis Central? They call it the high school or something like that. Graduated with a bachelor's degree in healthcare leadership from the University of Memphis. Who attended U of M? Amen. Amen. August 6, 2022, um, he completed his degree in three years. That is an awesome accomplishment. You all, y'all give him a hand clap for that. And he's also a graduate student at Louisiana State University, um, Street Report, pursuing a MDA in MBA in marketing. Um, moving um, Julian to the stage, we're, we're so excited, you all. Um, for this guest, not only do we have our brother Julian, but we have Pastor Donnie McClurkin. Amen. Amen. So I'm going to leave you all alone. Uh, Y'all have seen enough of me today. After Brother Julian, we'll hear from our bishop. Amen. The, none only than Bishop Brandon B. Porter. Is that all right? Can y'all give a hand clap for my daddy? That's my daddy, y'all. I don't even say daddy, but I, that's my daddy today, y'all. Amen. Y'all give a hand clap for him. Brother Julian, come on. Well, praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord again. Glad to be in the house of the Lord. Anybody grateful for the Lord this morning? Anybody grateful for his protection? Anybody grateful that you are still alive? There's a simple song that says, I, I'm so grateful. That I have Christ in my life. What would my life be without Him? It would be very dark and grim. When I am sad, keep Jesus cheers me. When I am lonely, Him will my comfort be. That's why I'm so grateful.
a hand. Amen. Hey, Joyce. Now, do me a favor. Will you celebrate those that are watching us on Facebook and YouTube who perhaps could not be here? To, you can do better than that. It may be your cousin or your auntie or somebody. Thank you for logging on, and we encourage you to like and share so that others, too, might be touched by the truth that we're going to experience today. Take your seats for a moment. We're going to just do a couple things, and today is a different day. I know. Hey, Andre. Today's a different day. We um, are doing youth services and have um, the college thing going on. And I don't know what all they're doing because they just kind of took over. But, uh, you know, Bryson, thank you to pass it, don't he? Amen. I'm going to have to hear him speak in tongues, so amen. Uh, <laughs> but I'm thankful for you and our youth ministry. We know the heights are out today, but we thank God for those of you that are working in our 
collegiate ministry and the various things you're doing. They've got a big concert tonight at 6, right? Is that right? 6, Josh Bracey and, and then the group out of Jackson and with, um, um, who is that? Help me out, somebody. What is it called? Love City, yes. Uh, okay, Club, Club City? Club Soda. Whatever it is, they come in. They're coming, amen, it's a lot of them, and so many others, and I'm going to be here with you all as well, praise the name of the Lord, and we're thankful, amen. Will you clap your hands for First Lady Melody as well? God bless you, amen, thank you, that's right, let her know you love her, and all of our elders and ministers, and let me say this, thank you, last Sunday was appreciation, wasn't it? Hey Amen. There's so much going on in my world right now. You know, I'm a little twisted in the head. But I want to thank you for the love you showed on last Sunday. Um, Pastor Brian Nelson from Houston was incredible. And, um, Pastor Andrew Singleton at the North Campus was incredible. We had a great time in worship um, just all day. And thank you for your love you've shown to my wife and I and our family. And even some of you gave gifts to my granddaughter. Thank you so much for what you did for my, my granddaughter and my daughter in love and my uh, Brandon's fiance as well. Amen. You're so sweet. You're so nice. And we were here and then we had a great time in North Memphis. If you missed it at North, you missed it. But thank you for the love and for the, the coordinators of our appreciation. Thank you so much. And donations you gave and people asking can we still give you sure can amen you can keep sowing and keep giving and uh, there are envelopes made available pass me that flyer if you would uh, on my clip there um so just want to thank you and and guess what we love whatever you do when you do your best god will do the rest say that when i do my best god will do the rest and so you may not have been able to give 1200 like deacon smith and this amount and 500 and 300 like others, but do your best. And that's all that matters. And we appreciate it. It's going right back into ministry. You know, we sow, we're sowers and we love people and we love the work of God. Amen. And so we'll be telling you that some other exciting things that are coming up real soon, but I appreciate you. Just wanted you to know from my family that we love you and thank you uh, for your love that you expressed to us on last Sunday. And you can continue to do so. Some of y'all may have gotten some extra money. You so said, I need to give Pastor a little more. Boy, come on. Come on with it then. Come on with it. Thank you very much. Hey, listen. Christmas is coming up. And we know we have uh, not only our Christmas Day service here at this location, but we're going to do Christmas Eve at the North Campus. I did not want to leave them out. Amen? And so I definitely want you to uh, be in participation with that. That's going to be 10 a.m., one hour service at the North Campus and and Christmas is on Sunday, so it's not just a holiday, it's a holy day. And so we're going to do our uh, one service on Christmas Day just here at this location. But it will begin at uh, 10 o'clock, I believe, from 10 to 11.30, I think that's what we said. And so just an hour and, and a half, just 90 minutes. But join with us. We're going to be giving gifts away, too, uh, at both locations, okay? And so some door prizes and other things that we're going to do just because... You know, it's a giving season. Is that okay? That's, it's all about Jesus Christ. We know that. And, um, and we're going to always lift up Christ, but we also want to love on one another. So I trust. We have some postcards. I want to ask our elders towards the culmination of the service to make sure you pass these out and share them with others. Both sides. One talks about Christmas Eve. The other talks about uh, Christmas Day. So you can be a part with us. Christmas cantata. See, I saw Tiffany out there in the audience. I see Zach over here. There they are. Uh, Christmas Cantata, the 18th, correct? The 18th, and they've got special guests and that are going to be here, and it's going to be a great, you know, they always do a fantastic job for the Christmas Cantata, and it's coupled with our drama ministry, and they have tremendous um, theater presentations. We have such gifted people. They could be in Hollywood. They're so gifted. Amen. And so we're going to join with them uh, on that. That's next Sunday, right? What time is that, guys? At 6 p.m., so please be a part of that with us. I'm thankful. We're going to sow seed this morning and be a blessing. Is that okay? Anybody love to give? Amen. It's more blessed to what? 
than it is to receive. And I believe that sometimes we talk more about the seed than we do the ground. But where you sow is just as important as what you sow. And sowing in ministry, sowing in people, sowing in ventures is so dire, is so necessary. And I want to thank you for your love for this ministry. And so many of you that watch us online are faithful. I'm getting texts even now from people saying, I'm sowing, Bishop, I'm sowing. And thank you so much. And there's Givelify, there is text to give. You'll see all of that on your screen in just a moment. But also uh, there's Cash App, and the Cash App for you to use is BB Porter. I think dollar sign BB Porter, the number one. Dollar sign BB Porter, the number one. And our uh, online um, ministering persons can share that, that information. Lisa Smith and others of you can repeat that information for those that may be watching. Uh, but again, Givelify is Greater Community Temple Memphis because there's some other Greater Community Temples, right? But Greater Community Temple Memphis and text to give. You'll see that on your screens. And of course, for those of you that are watching online, for you here. And of course, we have envelopes. We have credit card or debit card machines to my right and my left. If you want to sow that way, we welcome you um, to do so. I'm a tither. Anybody else a tither in here? I'm a tither, amen, and I believe in tithing and supporting the work of the Lord, and I'm thankful that God has increased, amen, because of our commitment. See, God will bless through you, right? He'll bless through you. What does that mean? Because sometimes he allows you to be a conduit for him to bless others, and so he gives sometimes through us so that we can minister uh, to the well-being of others. Three reasons why God blesses us. And that is that we, first of all, bless the kingdom back. We become a support system for the ministry of the Lord. And then that we are to bless our families. And then we're to give to others cheerfully. Amen? Uh, wouldn't you like to be somebody when your friend called you and said, I need $2,000. And your response is, no problem. Amen? Because God has blessed you in such a way you can help somebody else. Just turn to somebody right now and say, no problem. <laughs> now look back at him and say, I ain't asking yet. No, no. <laughs> Amen. No problem. That's a wonderful thing. God gives to us to bless the kingdom, to bless our families, and to give to others cheerfully. Amen. I want to welcome you to sow seed with us on today and to be a blessing. I love giving on Givelify. They've got good record systems, and I'm appreciative of that. This pandemic has pulled us in a whole other mode of giving and sowing, and we welcome it at this juncture of our lives. Amen. All right. Well, can we stand quickly? We're going to sow. I'm so in a hurry to hear this man of God who's with us, and I'm just ecstatic because I needed someone to pitch hit for me today. I've been kind of going through some stuff. Amen. I appreciate your prayers, though, you all that are here with us, and he is incredible, and I was just uh, blown away when I found out that we had this opportunity, and I'll tell you more in just a moment, but we are favored today. Uh, are you happy in Jesus? Amen. How many of y'all saved and you know you're saved? Amen. All right, then. You ought to a smile on your face. And if you're happy, you know what they say, you know what, smile is surely show it, right? All right, let's get our gifts. If you're going to give through your phones as, I, as I'm doing, you can lift that in the atmosphere of faith, in your envelopes. Put your, even put your prayer requests. I like to pray over those envelopes and believe God for untold miracles for you and yours. Gracious, Holy Father, we thank you uh, for this day and for this opportunity to come together in fellowship. But we also thank you that we have something to sow. And God, we know that once we begin to sow, you'll begin to cause something to grow. And I want to thank you for increase and favor that's coming our way so that we not only give to ourselves, but we can sow into other meaningful ventures of life. Thank you that you can trust us because we're trusting you with what we have. And I know, God, that you're going to make a way as you've always done out of no way. Let none suffer for their faith today. We're not giving till it hurts, but we're going to give till it helps. And God, I thank you right now that our ministry is going to be impacted, not just by these present, but the many that are watching us online that are going to sow right now with us as well. And I pray for increase and overflow in the name of Jesus. God, make a way out of no way. And we're looking forward to the better and the best that is on the way in Jesus' name. Now, God, I pray also. For well, my brother or sister that says, Pastor Porter, I'm struggling I'm in between blessings and I don't have what I desire. Let them know that little becomes much when we trust you with it in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Help me say these words. Here I go again, believing God. Come on, tell somebody, here I go again, trusting my God. 
All right, I want you, those of you that are present, you can bring your seats this way or give them right there online, or you can give to the attendants in the back. Come this way and bring those gifts. Come right on. Thank you. Thank you for walking. Thank you for sewing. Thank you. If you can't walk, it's hard for you to come down and send it by someone. Sing, Tiff. Sing it again. You all go online and share that. No, no. service there and we'll be back here what time again 6 p.m. to let's join in with our young people here's something else we're doing you know our church uh, is a part in our, our nonprofit which is called Community Project Inc. where we're building now a community center is looking very well in New Chicago community as well you got to we're gonna do a grand opening ribbon cutting and tour there for that community is what's going on but community projects has been integral and the testing sites and testing, we've been doing testing for several, several months for COVID. And we've also been doing campaigns to encourage uh, our family members and others to get vaccinated, right? And so uh, we have a campaign going on for the next two years just to promote vaccinations. We had our golf tournament, we're promoting it there. We had a comedy show and 
and so many other uh, things, even with Christmas in November where we gave out food, clothes, and toys to over 6,000 families. We had over 250 people to get vaccinated. Amen. Somebody cl clap goes there. Y'all don't know where to clap. Amen. And, and tonight we're going to be promoting vaccinations just today at, at large and encouraging our millennials and college students. We have something that our, our um, committee uh, are doing and that in, through Community Project, it is called uh, Campus and Congregations. Well, they'll be going throughout the state of Tennessee and going to various universities and schools and encouraging them to get vaccinated. The lower numbers of people getting vaccinated are the millennials. And so we just want to encourage them so they can keep grandmama and them and everybody else safe, right? And take care of that business. So that's our role and something we're doing in partnership with the state of Tennessee. So that is part of our venture. Uh, tonight with our young people and all of the various things that we got going on. I want y'all to stay safe. COVID is still out here. Y'all know that, right? Amen. Amen. But we're believing God too. We're trusting God and taking care of ourselves, doing our own personal preventive things that are needful for us. Um, you know, I, I recently on last Monday, I had to run to Orlando, my best friend passed. Amen. And I, I want to say something, but I'm still messed up. Um, and I think the last time I spoke with him was Thanksgiving, and he'd never been sick in his life. He'd never been to a hospital. He's 65 years old, never been to a hospital. And the one time he goes to the hospital, he never comes out. Um, but uh, Bishop Derek W. Hutchins, one of the most incredible gifts and preachers that I've ever known. And um, my dearest friend, uh, you know, when people are gone, you miss talking to them, don't you? And so I, I went to Orlando, you know, uh, his brother worked for us for several years here. Dennis Hutchins, his, his son, little Derek, and his precious wife and others. I went there just to minister to the family and to the church. And we got scheduled the uh, services for him now on Friday. Ironically, it's on my birthday, uh, the home going service, the local and uh, jurisdictional services there in Orlando at his beautiful new church there at um, Bishop Sheard and the National Church are coming on Saturday at 10 o'clock. So I was already scheduled to be in Orlando Monday, so I leave out Monday morning for because I'm on the board of directors for the Conference of National Black Churches. So I was already scheduled to be there for our convention uh, that's going through. That's a picture of us in Israel together. Um, and so I. Um, was going to be to the Thursday and had to have something else I was doing in Dallas, but I had to cancel that because of the service now. So just pray for me. Will you do that? That's all, man. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, just pray for me. Um, so I was trying to figure out what I was going to do today because I'm like, I'm such a baby right now, you know, I'm crying like a girl up here. So I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, hey, I'm said, I said, I'm like, what am I going to do? tomorrow because I'm going to be silly and I don't know what's going on. I'm going to have to crack jokes or something. And uh, Rena called me. Rena and her husband called me and said they were at Piccadilly's eating with Dunny McClurk. And I said, you doing what? I said, girl, you don't know Dunny when you see him. Apparently you got some imposter. I'm telling you, Bishop, and we're getting ready to take him. I said, you taking Dunny McClurk back to his hotel? I said, something is wrong with this picture. And so I said, put him on the phone. I want her to prove it. And by that time, it was, I don't know if it was too late or whatever. I think he had already gone to his room. And then I remembered that Brown Baptist had him coming here for a concert tonight. I think they got a 3 o'clock. I won't, so I won't pass the order. No, I'm talking about it. They have a 3 o'clock concert. And I may try to make that one. 3 o'clock concert. And then they have a, a 7 o'clock concert. Okay, but y'all will be back here at 6. Amen, somebody. But um, anyway, so Pastor, I mentioned your concerts. Uh, and when I found out, of course, I called Pastor because just out of uh, principle, because he's here on contract with them, and I didn't want Pastor to think I was trying to do anything and to to uh, diminish what he had going on. And he said, Bishop, you know, I know about your friend. I know what happened. He said, Man, I have no problem. He said, I'm not going to announce it at my church. <laughs> I said, You don't have to, Pastor. But he had he had a great understanding, and he was. And we're looking for it. I know he's going to be a blessing to Brown Baptist. What an amazing ministry. Amen. 
And so they had my friend in town. I said, Donnie is, I said, oh, my God. And I put, I put the APB out on him to get him. And maybe he'll tell you about that. He was like, he said, are you with the FBI or what? But uh, I was so thankful. I know he's, he's been in Africa. He's getting ready to go back to Africa. He couldn't come for Mother Louise Patterson's service, who he was very endeared to. Uh, he and Pastor Marvin Winans and... Um, because he was in Africa then, and he came back here for Brown and getting ready to go back. And he said, and I disturbed his, his sleep he had planned for this morning. But I'm so thankful that he could be here with us. He has an amazing ministry in New York, about to open up a second location, amen. And you know his incredible singing ministry that has uh, gotten you up when you fell down, amen, somebody. How many of y'all fell down before? Don't play some of y'all still down, amen. But uh, he's gotten us up when we were down and ministered to us so many times. He's been here before with us, and I'm thankful uh, that he's able to come by and preach for me today. Amen. I need, I need somebody to preach to me today, too. Amen, you all. Thank you. Um, I remember the first time. We all right? I remember the first time um, I met uh, Pastor Dunning McClurkin. It was at uh, Bishop Marvin Wyman's church. He had just opened up his church there in in um, Detroit, and um, at that time, not Pastor uh, Dunny McClurkin, but just Dunny, he was downstairs in the basement. I don't remember, he was playing the piano. I think y'all had some kind of homeless program going on down there, and he was down there ministering uh, to them. And I'm like, well, who is this guy here? He was wearing that little ugly piano out down there. And, but just such a kind spirit and always been so congenial and just warm. And even Rena said, he is so nice. I said, you didn't meet Dunny then. You didn't meet, no, I was messing with her. But he is such a warm person and loved all over the world. Amen, somebody. Amen. And he's Church of God in Christ. I'm, I'm, bringing him, I'm getting his certificates back updated. Amen. Every time he always come to the Holy Convocation, he just couldn't come this year. And uh, we love him and his family and and all that God is doing, God's done some miraculous things for him, of which we're thankful and we are glad. And I want you to open your hearts as he comes to minister to us on today. Will you receive him gladly? Amen. 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 Let him know you thank him for answering your pastor's phone call. Come on, let him know you appreciate that. Because he could have ignored it. Come on, you all. Let him know. Let him know. Come on, let him know. The one and only. Grammy Award winner, all the awards and accolades he's received in his life, but he remained humble because he knows where his help comes from. Preaching machine, incredible man of God, none other than Pastor Dunny McClurkin. Come on, you all. Let's be a blessing. Praise the Lord. I'm going to ask everyone just to bow your heads. Father, we humbly come before you because you are sovereign. We humble ourselves with the lowering of our heads to signify your superiority, your sovereignty, your majesty. Great God has created all things by the word of your power. We look to you today as we do every day. You are our God and beside you there is none other. So now, Lord God, we praise you. And we give your name glory. And I pray that the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart would be acceptable in your sight, O oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Let these your people be blessed by you and never impressed by me, I pray. To God be the glory for the great things that he has done, is doing, and will do. And to this, every, God, every one of God's people just said, amen. amen. Now, before we go any further, could you uh, set the atmosphere a little bit? And I want every believer, not the, not the sinners, but every believer to give God a great praise and shake this place. Give God a great praise and shake this place. Is that the best you have? Is that the best you have? Hallelujah. Two. 
To God be the glory for the great things he has done. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. God is wonderful, and I praise him for his loving kindness, which is greater than light. Um, I'm not pretentious, nor do I do this as a career. I am not a preacher by career. I'm a preacher by calling. And uh, this is not my livelihood. Jesus has blessed, and I thank him for his kindness. But the gospel of Jesus Christ, the word of God, is very dear to me. And it is uh, not something that I take lightly, nor will I abuse the call of God on my life, nor would I shame God nor the angel of this church by coming to deliver anything other than what God has said. Amen. And I praise God for his kindness. I thank God for the angel of this house. We praise God for the right bishop, Brandon Porter. Oh, I thought this is the church of God in Christ. I thought we knew how to honor our servants. Everyone stand to your feet and praise God for Bishop Brandon Porter. And while you're standing, praise God for his wonderful wife. We praise God for his life that stands next to him. His beautiful, wonderful family to every one of you, the household of faith, every elder, pastor, minister, deacon, trustee, usher, um, janitor, everybody. Bless whatever you do. Glory to God. I am not going to be before you long. I am going to give my disclaimer. I am not the quintessential preacher. I don't do that. <laughs> I don't do that because, uh, because you know, it kind of hurts my throat. Praise God. <laughs> and um, I am born again for 53 years. And um, oh, no, no, don't, 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 don't clap off that because it didn't mean I was right for 53 years. I was born again 53 years and I have been in the, in the, in the cycle of God's perfecting me ever since. And uh, I praise God for his patience with me. And I thank God for all that he's allowed me to accomplish during this period of 53 years. But the greatest accomplishment that I could have ever had was meeting him, was being born again. And, and I'm telling you, that is my greatest passion. And I'm not going to cry. My greatest passion is Jesus. He has been the consistent friend, my covering, my help, my hope, my love, my heart from the time, July 14th, 1969, until this day. He has changed my life forever, and there is no other God or none else that can fill the void in my life more than Jesus Christ. And I just want to make that plain to you before I go any further. I don't believe that religion is something that we just do without I believe that there should be a sense of appreciation. I don't even hear an amen here. I think that there should be a sense of appreciation that makes us aware that if it had not been, if it had not been for the Lord who is on our side, if it had not been for the steadfast love, the faithfulness of our God, who stuck by us in times when we didn't even recognize, if it hadn't been for the multitude of blessings that he gave us, and if it hadn't been for interrupting death, if he hadn't come in and laid waste to the enemy, we would have been overcome and overwhelmed. But because of God, we have not been consumed. We are standing here by the grace by the grace of God, it's no goodness of our own. It's no ingenuity of our own. It wasn't because we knew what to do. We didn't know what next, the next second was going to bring. But God, who is rich in mercy, he 
covered us. He walked with us. He held us up. And when we got to a point we couldn't walk, he lifted us up. And he's still with us to this day. Somebody shout a praise to God here. Shout out a praise. God. He is absolute in all things. And I just wanted to give him his prophets before I go any further. I just wanted to give God the prophets. And I'm going to go right into the word to Julian. Where's that young man? Where that boy at? Stand up, boy. I ain't never heard of you before. A couple of weeks ago, I ran into a, into a, a what is it, a, a, a YouTube thing or a digital something. I'm 63. I don't know that stuff. And I happened to be passing by, and I heard somebody singing. A hundred thousand people are singing on there. But I stopped, and I listened to it, and I listened again, and I listened to that song about five times. And when they called your name today, I said, that boy can sing. But more than sing, son, because in the church of God in Christ, just about everybody's a singer. But more than singing, son, you have an anointed voice and anointed life. And when they gave your, the litany of your scholastic achievements, I sat back and saying, this is absolutely so promising that you are more than just a gift. You are an intellect. You are the pride of your parents. You, sir, stand in a place of, of, of prosperity that you have no clue how far it's go God's going to take you. And I'm a shangda da koti asanda. Watch what God does in you and watch your life. Don't let anything sidetrack you because the, law, the more anointing on your life, the more the enemy's attention. God has an anointing on your life that causes the enemy to pay attention. God told me while you were sitting there, you've got all the attention of heaven on you and all the attention of hell at the same time. Honor God and watch God honor you. Somebody praise God for that young man. I said somebody praise God for that young man. If I about talk, if I in my shendaka, if I was in my church, I'd lay hands on him. Because there's an anamandi to the whole. There's an impartation. Shebetan, come here, son. Come here, come here. Raise your hands. 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 Most high king. As was done for me at 11 years old, I now, in obedience to you, God, we just lay hands upon him. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. In my mind, in a Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Touch him. Touch him. Let your hand so heavily rest my upon God. him. My God. My God. My God. Let him know the time. Thank you, Jesus. Open up the four corners of the earth. Yes, yes, yes. And I pray that he represents you. Yes. Lord God, give him strength and Thank tenacity. Yes, the anointing that destroys every yoke. Yes. Give him to be under strong covering in that amashte. And let the gospel of Jesus Christ be heard through him in song and word. We pray in your name, Jesus. Amen. Amen.
The anointing is in this place. The anointing is heavy in this room. And I want everybody that's got a request before the Lord just to get into this anointing and give God praise in advance. Praise him for the manifestation coming. Praise him according to you. his promise to you. Lose yourself for a moment in prayer. Lose, forget about everything else. Lose yourself. Lose yourself in praise to God. Expecting the miraculous. Expecting the breakthrough. Expecting the move of God. Expecting the manifestation. In the house and online, give God praise in expectation. I'm trying to preach, but the anointing is so heavy in this house. Shama! Yeah, 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 Set this house ablaze with praise. Let the power of the Holy Ghost be free to move through your praise. Hallelujah! Let God lift the burden off of your heart through your praise. Let God restore the joy through your praise. Let God increase you through your praise. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Let God heal your body through your praise. Hey, I'm my son. There's a breakthrough in this house. God just shifted something in this room. And he did it for you. He's about to show you that his promises are right on time. Because some of you are about to take your next step into your promise. And if I'm talking about you, you praise him and forget about everybody else. on but 
<laughs> there's a victory. There's a victory. There, there's a victory that's just been discovered in this room. There's a praise out of a believer in this room that is absolutely secure. You know God has just done something with the shift that happened in this house. Don't you hold back when God moves. You didn't get dressed to come here just to be dormant. You didn't get dressed to sit up in that seat. You came here to worship with the saints. To give God the glory. Hallelujah. We're not just here because it's all my Baha. We're not just here because it's Sunday. You got to praise in your belly. You got to praise in your belly. just for God sometimes that praise is therapeutic for you God always deserves the praise but sometimes you need to get that out so that you can lift yourself you can lift the burden up off your chest you can lift the burden off of your shoulders just thinking about the goodness of Jesus all it takes is a thought somebody say all it takes is a thought all it takes is one thought. When I think, just a thought of the goodness of Jesus. And all, all he's done for me. Something happens down in my belly. Something happens in the core of my being. My soul. My soul overrides the circumstances. My soul overrides my problems. My soul cries out. I 
moving on. My soul. Somebody's soul is crying out right now. Hallelujah. I want to talk to you today. I want to talk to you today about a specific subject. <laughs> Don't make me change my sermon. I, I want to talk to you today about a very specific subject, and it's going to be very brief. I want everyone to just say time. time. Look, scream, scream, time. time. I, no, I want even the quiet people to scream, time. time. I want to talk to you about time. I want to talk to you about this divine element called time. The, this, this creation of God called time. How valuable it is, time. How unique it is, time. How complex it is, time. I don't care what you have to say. And, and I want to talk to you about how we view and live in time. I'm going to go to the book of Romans, the 13th chapter, starting from the 11th verse. And I'm telling you, I'm not going to be long. But uh, with this theme in mind, Romans 13 and 11 says, and that knowing the time, you got to know what time you're in. You got to know time. You got to understand time. And that knowing the season, knowing the period, knowing the time that you're in. Paul writes to the church at Rome. He says it's high time. It's about time. It's time for you to wake up out of your sleep. Church, hear me. We are in a place where we need to realize that we have been dormant too long. And we need to wake up. But this is the time to be woke. This is the time for the church to understand its purpose. It is high time to wake up out of sleep. For now is our salvation, the coming of Jesus Christ. Now is our salvation nearer than when we believe. Then he tells the church at Rome, at the church, not the sinners, not the world. This is written to the church. He says, the night is far spent. Meaning you've wasted so much time. The night is far spent and the day of the coming of Jesus Christ is at hand. So what you've got to do, church, he's talking to the church, he's talking to the church, he's talking to the church. So what you've got to do is cast off the works of darkness. He's talking about darkness in the church. Cast out the works of darkness and put on the armor of light. And then he tells the church that you've been dishonest. He says, let us walk honestly as in the day Let us walk honestly as in the day. Not walking in, in rioting and drunkenness and, and chambering and wantonness and envy and strife with one another. He said, well, put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision of the flesh to fulfill the lust thereof. The time is important. Knowing the time. Time is divine. Time is God created. Time is made for man. For every man only has a limited amount of time. Uh, every human on this earth has an assigned time of life and an assigned time of death. And you've got to understand that time is fleeting. It moves very fast. Hallelujah. It moves very fast. Every second turns into a minute. And you can't get that minute back. Every 60 minutes turn into an hour. And you can't get that hour back. Every 24 of those hours turns into a day. And you can't get that time back. You don't know what I'm saying here. 
Every, every, every seven days turns into a week. And every week, every, I'm not sure how, every four or five weeks turns into a month. And every 12 months turns into a year. And all of those moments, all of those moments God gives us to learn, to grow, to increase, to mature. And we squander more time than we utilize. Uh, you can tell the truth. You can tell the truth. It's okay. We have squandered more time than we have well used. And naturally, it is impossible to get that time back. Somebody say naturally. You know, you know time was made. Time, 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 time was made on the fourth day. The fourth day of creation is when time was made. On the first day of creation, God said, let there be light. And, and the light came out of him, this great God, this great God, this great God. Out of him, just out of the utterance, out of his mouth. He says, let there be, and there was, and out of him comes light. Before there's a molecule, before there's a proton, neutron, electron, before there's an atom, before there's matter, God speaks, and light comes out of him. What a mighty God we serve. And that light pierces through the darkness. And that light travels. And the light is still traveling to this day. Because of the awesomeness of our God. Hallelujah. Remember, oh, Sharon, that I'm out. Remember the Bible said every good and perfect gift is from above. Coming down from the Father of lights. God fathered light. And all oh, you sure, he's a wonderful God. And then he said in the evening and the morning, well, the first day. It is not talking about chronological day. It is not talking about minutes and hours, for there are no minutes and hours. He's talking about a season of creation. Hallelujah. Y'all don't hear me. And then on the fourth day, on the fourth day, God grabs a hold of light and balls it up and puts it in the middle of a universe. Out of the many multiverses. He puts it in the middle of one Alpha Centaurian universe. And he sets nine planets. I know they changed and said Pluto's not a planet. But God put nine planets around us. And every one of the planets have their orbit around this sun. This light called the sun. And that's when time began. For time began chronologically when the earth that was created started on its access to turn, hallelujah, with the sun shining upon it. And it takes 24 hours for the earth to turn on its access, hallelujah, to begin another day. That's when time began. And it takes 365 days for the earth to spin on its axis and go around the sun. This is time chronological. And every moment is significant. Every moment is God ordained. Hallelujah. And we've got to value time. We have got to see it as something as sacred as everything else that God made. Because indeed, in time lies our success. In time lies our productivity and purpose. In time li lies our, 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 our prosperity. It's all in time. And lack of time will show forth our poverty. Lack of time will show our procrastination. Lack of time will show loss. Am I talking to anybody? Somebody holler time. And every moment that we lose, every bad decision that we make, every bad relationship that we foster, hallelujah, every opportunity that we squander, we lose time. Bullshit. For we were born in time, on time, for time. And we've got to sober up to realize that our time is precious. For the time that he put us down here on this earth, we're supposed to accomplish a lot of things. But instead, we have seen many failures. 
We're supposed to have much productivity, but in essence, we've seen a lot of loss. Hallelujah. We have sat back and received prophecy after prophecy. We have heard word after word, and we have failed to put it to the test of time. And we have been comfortable hearing prophetic words and letting time pass by and not receiving a thing. We are geared for the, for the sensationalism, for the excitement, but we see very little manifestation. Hmm. I'm probably getting in trouble. We've said, if you told the truth, if you, if you told the truth today, you know that there have been prophetic words spoken over you that you have not seen. There have been prophetic utterance of things that you were supposed to have and accomplish that you have not attained. And you've learned how to just keep on praising and act like it never happened. But I want everything that God said. I want to make sure that I maximize my time down here on this earth. I've lost. I've lost a lot of time. I've lost. A lot of opportunities in my life. I've let things slip through my fingers through my own procrastination. I've allowed myself to hook up to relationships that suck the time away from me. And left me at a deficit, but I've come to the realization that being that it's impossible naturally, somebody say naturally, to redeem these moments gone I've got to believe that I am in a supernatural relationship with God that can remedy all the time that I've lost y'all don't hear me I'm getting back all my lost time there is no time machine on this earth and there's no mastermind that creates a device or apparatus that can bring me back to a time that I've squandered. Man does not have the capacity. But I do serve a supernatural God who is not bound by time. I'm about to preach myself happy. He is not bound by time. Let us use for an example this pulpit. This is the entirety of time. This, this will be the example of the beginning of creation till the end of revelation. This will encompass all of time. Holy most high God. And we are somewhere in, the, in this period of time right near the end and this cannot be altered this cannot be altered by man because man is caught in time but God stands outside of time and God manipulates time and God maneuvers time and God handles time he is not just the God of the present and he is not just the God of the future. Somebody follow me. But he's also the God of the past. And right in your present where he can bless you. And in your future where he's leading you. He can also walk backwards into your past. And while you remain in your present, God can fix your past. I don't hear anybody here. I'm going to say that again. When, when you, where you are in your present. On your way to your future. God is the power. He don't have power. God is the power that can walk backwards into your broken past. Find the place that was broken and destroyed. Find the place where the atrocity happened and the hurt was implied. Find the place of the molestation and the broken heart. Find the place of the relationship that went bad. Find that place and heal it while you're still in your present. Y'all not hearing me. Uh, I can tell you as the truth, I can tell you by my own example that in my present, God walked back in my past. And he walked back to June 8, 1968. 
to a day that I was raped three times by my uncle at eight years old. And I lived a broken, hobbled life. And I walked from eight Hoshedamah into my future, believing God, but still with a limp. I'm saved, sanctified, filled with the Holy Ghost, but still with crutches. Y'all don't hear what I'm saying. I'm speaking in tongues as the Spirit gave utterance, but still broken inside. Because you can be spiritually right while your soul is still bad. I don't hear anybody here. You can be spiritually in tune with God and your soul still be jacked. Oh, y'all, y'all. You can speak with tongues and be baptized in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost, and Jesus' name, and still come up in the power of the anointing and broken. Uh-huh. And somebody says something wrong, and it triggers you with your saved self. Somebody reminds you of the past, and it sets you off with your tongue talking. Somebody do something and, and, and remind you of a relationship gone bad and, 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 and it messes your mind up. Am I talking to anybody here? Yeah. yeah, I know some of you don't want to tell the truth. It's okay, but you're free in this house. Is there anybody here that has those triggers? And that's because although you've made it to where you are, there's still a broken element in you that's got to be healed. And it was broken in your time my past. In your time for. So I walked into my future limping, gifted, limping, talented, limping, preaching, limping, filled with the Holy Ghost, limping, good in the spirit, bad in life. Y'all don't hear me. I was secure in church. But I didn't know how to manipulate through my everyday living. And I was hurting inside and just thought that Jesus was enough. And I didn't need anything to delve into the depth of my heart. And Jesus had to let me know you're broken, son, because of the time past. And what I've got to do is I've got to fix your time past so you can walk free from your limp into your future. I don't hear anybody Free from your limp into your destiny. Free from your limp into your prosperity. I gotta go back. Keep going, son. Let me walk backwards for a moment. Let me go back to the night that you were raped three times. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna heal you of the brokenness of that day. How do you do that? Boy, if I told you, you still wouldn't know. But I'm gonna heal you of this thing. Well, Donnie, how do you know that he did so? You're just being hypothetical. You're I'm not being serious. I'm being totally literal because God will go back into your past if you let him and heal the time that was lost, the time that was broken. How will you know that you're healed? Well, this is how. You'll have the memory, but you won't have the pain. You'll have the memory, but you won't have the anger. You'll have the memory, but you won't have the resentment. You'll have the memory, but you won't have the hatred. That's how you know that he walked backwards. And healed your past. Time is important. And I kept making you say, you cannot, re you cannot regain your time naturally. Not naturally. But we're not dealing with a natural God. We're dealing with a supernatural God. And with man, it is impossible. But with God, somebody got it. But with God, all things are possible. So God, speaks to a prophet by the name of Joel and say, I know that you lost a lot of time. And I know that the palmer worm and the canker worm and the caterpillar and the locust ate up your time. And I know that you lost a lot in that time. But in Joel 2 and 25, he said, but I, I will restore. I will restore. 
the years. Oh, y'all not hearing this. I will restore the years that the canker worm, the caterpillar, the palmer worm, and the locust destroyed. I'm going to give those years back to you. Y'all not hearing me. God can give you back all that you lost. If you'll only believe, God, he is poised and ready to reach back into your past. And the opportunities that were missed, bring them back around again. And the time that was squandered, bring it back around again. But God, I'm older now. He said, not only will I give you back the years, but I'll restore your youth. I'll give you back your strength. Y'all don't hear what I'm saying. You won't look your age. You won't feel your age. And I'll take you to a place of plenty. I'll take you to a place of prosperity. If I'm talking about you, you should be on your feet now. Because God has given you another day. He's given you another time around. He's going to give you another chance. Redeem. Redeem in the time. Y'all don't hear that mean? That means to redeem is to buy back. God said, I'm going to cause you to get the time back. And I'm telling you right now, at this stage in my life, at this age in my life, I'm taking this seriously. I'm getting it all back. Taking back everything I lost. I'm even going up to the enemy and telling them you owe me some things. Give me back my joy. You owe me some things. Give me back my family. You owe me some things. Give me back my peace. You owe me some things. You better hear what I'm telling you. I'm snatching out of the hand of the enemy. Somebody just, just, just symbolically snatch it. You get your, your son, your daughter, snatch it. Your, your mother, your father, snatch it. Your grandchild, your niece, your nephew. I'm taking it all back. Taking it all back. you to go buck wild, put a praise on it or not, it's not my business, but I know that this is, this is my time to see the miracle, my time to get my breakthrough, my time to see the manifestation, my time to walk into my promise, my time. If I'm talking about you and this is a personal thing, forget about who's next to you and praise him for your time. No, no, strike the ground, strike the ground. Praise him for your time.
paid the price for this time. I went through it. hell and high waters for this time. I've suffered a hurt and loss to come to this time. And at this time of my life, I'm about to have it all by the grace of God. Yes, I win. I'm not going to walk away with a good feeling and no manifestation. I am not going to walk away with just a good feeling on a good Sunday without looking on the horizon for the manifestation of everything God promised me. This is my time and I refuse to be refused. This is my time and I deny to be denied. I will see it come to pass. I will not close my eyes until I see it. Wow! This is my time. Wow! This is my moment. Wow, God! This is my season. Somebody put a praise on the right here. No, no, somebody put a praise on Come on, leave out of religion. Come into your relationship. Put a praise on it.
redemption of time. God is going to give you opportunity again. Some of you are going to fix your family's dysfunction. Some of you are going to literally, by the wisdom and the love of God, fix the time that you've lost with your family. And you're going to look to see the healed and the prosperous relationship in your home. You will be known as the repairer of the breach. God will use you for this new time. And you'll be able to hug those that you haven't hugged in a while. You'll be able to love on and forgive that stuff from yesterday. This is a new time and you're not bringing old things into a new time. You're not going to bring old grudges into a new time. This is a time for us to have the abundant life. We're supposed to be living an abundant life. Not scrounging from day to day. We're supposed to be living in abundance. And everything that we go through is supposed to have a significance. Good, bad, or right, wrong. Everything has a significance. Because every moment in time, whether it hurts or heals, is important. It's important. I've learned. God gave me back my time. He gave me back my family. My mother, who was a backslidden preacher, dealing drugs with my two older sisters from our house, PCP tablets, Acapulco Gold and Panama Red. And yeah, some of you remember. And my alcoholic deacon father, huh, drunk on Saturday and leaving prayer on Sunday. The dysfunctional home fighting like Muhammad Ali and Joe Frazier and hiding knives and turning boiling water off the stove and calling the police and dealing with batteries and raising a violent family and brothers and sisters that became violent and it was a dysfunctional time and God had to make a promise that there will be another time a new time and on one Tuesday morning, drug addicted mother, addicted to prescription pills, PCP tablets, and marijuana. One Tuesday morning, I got up, and God had told me through my grandmother, it is time. She was speaking in tongues and said, es tiempo, es tiempo. She kept saying, es tiempo. That means it is time. She doesn't know Spanish. <laughs> and she just kept saying, es tiempo, es tiempo. Dancing in the floor, es tiempo. And that Tuesday morning, I got up to go to church. There was a morning service prayer. I got up and getting dressed. I'm 23 years old and Frances, my mother, she got dressed and I'm thinking she going to the store. Church van is coming to pick me up. I'm walking out the door and Frances is walking out behind me. I said, well, mommy, where you going? She said, I'm going to church with you. Do you mind? He gives you back your time. I said, come on if you think you can handle it. We rode in silence, got there a half hour before service started. I went to the bathroom and came back out and I didn't see my mom. I said, now how did she get out of here? But I heard tongues. And when I got to the front of the church, she laying out prostrate, speaking in tongues. He will give you time back. We went home on that Tuesday night and my mother when everybody came home from work and school, my mother, at about 7.30 that night, went to the top, the bottom of the stairs and called my two older sisters down and called the rest of the family into the living room and said, we're having prayer. And she prayed for every one of them and my two older sisters gave their lives to the Lord. So the drug dealership ended. 
he will restore the days. The next night we had prayer again, but now there's four of us saved. Yeah? And we're praying with the doors open. The windows open and the neighbors heard the noise and they thought it was a fight like we usually have. And they came over, wonderful two lesbians came over, wonderful people, and came over to stop the fight. And my mother invited them in. Next thing they know, they were on their knees crying out, speaking in tongues. You, you better hear. When God gives you back your time, it's so that you can be made whole and others can prosper through you. By the end of the year, the last one was my daddy. My alcoholic, cigarette smoking, cussing, fighting daddy. Deacon of the church daddy. One day I came home from Detroit. Came home from Detroit. Sat down, my dad came. And he's talking to me. While he's talking, he just started going, you know, because... And I let it go for a couple of minutes while he's talking. I said, Daddy, what is wrong with you? He said, boy, you asking me and you talk about the Holy Ghost and you asking me what's wrong with me? <laughs> he said, I took my liquor bottle into the woods and I said, if this boy is right, this is my last day drinking and flung his bottle into the woods. From that time to the time he died, never took another drink. God gave me back my time with my father. Oh, how precious it is to have God cause your time to be restored to you. The uncle that raped me, the great uncle that raped me three times in the one night at eight years old, as he lay on his deathbed, I was able to fly from Detroit to Harlem, go to the hospital. No matter how broken I was, God has a way of healing. And I was able to sit at his bedside. And in the words of Bishop O.T. Jones Jr., tell him, Uncle Clarence, you can go to heaven now. All is known and all is forgiven. Day next, he closed his eyes and went to heaven. God will give you back your time. God will give you back a time of mercy, a time of forgiveness, a time of healing. Somebody say, it's my time. Now, as I take my seat, I don't want this just to be a sermon. I want this to be an absolute convinced moment that I will not walk away from this service today and not receive the restoration of my time. I will see opportunity come back. I will see business deals come back. I will see resources come back. I will see him put back together relationships. I will have my time reclaimed. And if I'm talking about you, I got to go, Bishop. I got to go. If I'm talking about you, I want you to run down here right now with your hands up. Run down here. I said run, run, run. I said run, run. Got to move with urgency, with urgency, with urgency. Run, run with urgency, with urgency, with urgency. Hands up, hands up as a sign that you receive. Hands up with your sign as a sign that you receive. That's right, keep coming, keep coming. Hands up, hands up. Hands up. Hands up and praise it. Hands up and believe it. Hands up, receive it.
Rejoice over it. Rejoice that God's giving it back to you. Rejoice that God's giving it back to you. Restoring the time. Redeeming the time. Hands up. That's it. That's it. That praise is going straight up to God. This is a new day. I receive this new day. I reclaim my time. In the mighty name of Jesus. I reclaim my time. In the mighty name of Jesus. Boy, yeah, Baba. Get happy about it. Rejoice over it. Dance about it. Shout about it. This is my time. This is my time. This is my time. Yeah, yeah, Baba. So far, I'm living in your shadow. In house, online. This is my time. In house, online. This is my time. Get joy, get joy, get joy about it. Get joy about it. Get happy about it. That's right, rejoice about it. This is your time. A new day for your family. A new day for your relationship. A new day for your business. A new day, a new day for your ministry. That's it, that's it. Oh God, all these breakthroughs, all these breakthroughs. All these breakthroughs. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Jesus. Look at them. Walking back into your past. Look at them. Bringing lost moments back to you. Look at them. Doing what only God can do. Jesus, oh Jesus, oh Jesus, do it Jesus, do it Lord, do it Lord, do it Lord, do it. like it's a new day. I dare you. I dare you. Go back with a praise like it's a new day. Go back with rejoicing. Go back with praise. You're not praising him.
say amen for my backup group. Give him a hand. What about Pastor Dunny McClurkin? Let him know you love him. Let him know he touched you with the truth of his heart on the day. Man of God, you blessed us. I am in debt to you. Thank you so much for coming and spending some time with GCT. GCT, come on, show him some love one more time. Let him know. Come on, Al, I don't see you moving. Come on, clap those hands back there. Let him, let him know you appreciate him. He's got two concerts today, and he came over here and poured out himself to us. I got to get him somewhere and feed him something. He looks a little skinny. Amen. And so I guess, <laughs> give him a little food in him. Amen. But we got North Memphis. I'm looking for my clock, y'all. Please get my clock back. I don't know what time it is. 12.07. Yeah, we got North Memphis at 12.30. And our uh, youth praise team are headed there to minister. And that's 12.30. And then we'll be back here at what time? 5.30. Well, y'all can come at 5.30. I think we start at 6. Let's have a grand, great time together. Thank you again, Pastor. Love you, man. Amen. Wait till I call. Wait till I call Vicky and Marvin and tell them how you blessed us on today. Thank you so much for your love and for your gift. He is certainly coveted all over the world, and we feel honored and privileged that he could stop by and be with us on today. God bless you. Listen, we're going to, hey, anyone here that want to join church today? He said, Bishop, I need a church. I need a church home. I need somewhere to call home. And you want to hear, you want to come today and because there's a rumor about our church. Let me tell you before you join. Let me go ahead because I don't want you to get shocked when you look online. There's a rumor about our ministry. All right, I'll go ahead and tell you. I'll be straight about it. And the rumor is that I'm the best pastor in town. Amen, somebody. <laughs> if you want to come and be a part of this ministry, this is your grand and great opportunity to do so. You have five seconds to get up and let me know. And otherwise, you got to come join next Sunday. One, two, three, four, five. All right, let's stand. We're going to go home. Amen. Blessings to you. Thank you. Thank you. Beautiful decorations here today. Amen. Thank you. Where's Tiffany? Tiffany Harmon did this. Amen. Love Tiffany. Thank you so much, Tiffany. Each of you, love you. Thank you so very much for being in worship today. And again, thank you for what you shared with my wife and I on last week. Keep me in your prayers. Will you do that for me? Amen. Amen. All of this week, and you know what I'm going through, and I need you. It's good to have family that's getting in there with you. Pastor McClurkin, amazing word. This pandemic has robbed us of time pandemic with the social distancing has robbed us of so much time, but I believe that God is going to restore. Amen. There's so many meanings about the number 23, as we well know it, but I'm going to embrace the positive notes about it, which has to do with revelation and restoration and rejuvenation. I'm believing that God is going to give back to us. Amen. And David said in the 23rd Psalm, I shall not want. How many know you're not going to want for anything? Man of God, so you're getting it all back. Touch somebody, tell them I'm getting ready to get it all back. In the name of Jesus. Let's look to the Lord. Gracious Father, we love you and thank you. Thank you again for this amazing gift in your manservant, Pastor Dunny McClurk. And thank you for touching him and even sparing his life so many times. And I thank you, God, even the recent incidents, even at the hotel that you covered and kept him, didn't let the dog bite him. Thank you, Jesus, for all God that you've done for him and his ministry, how he's poured into us. And thank you for these and all the songs and the ministry and, and those that have blessed us in their worship on today. And I pray tonight as our young people come back with all of our guests that are traveling from far and near that you give them safe passage and travel in the name of the Lord. And let your name be lifted. And, oh, God, let your glory be revealed that those who come might get to know you as Savior and Lord. Go with us as we leave this place, but never your presence. And, oh, God, I thank you. Continue to touch the Hutchins family and others in his local church and the many others that are attached to his ministry. Only you can bring solace to us, and we know that. So we put our hope and trust in you in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Just wave at somebody, pinch them or push them, and tell them I'm so glad you came to church. Love you. God bless you online. Thank you for watching. May the Lord add to you richly is my prayer. Blessings.